And of course, it's Wednesday, so meteorologist Jacob Morris is here. It's all about here. the weather today. All about the weather and some cool and fascinating things to talk about. It always is, Jacob, but yeah. uh, this is really cool. This winter, we've had a lot of frosty scenes because of a lot of foggy nights. And there's a difference in those frosty scenes between hoarfrost and rime ice. It's a very subtle difference, but we'll go over that here during Morse Code of Weather. We've gotten lots of photos submitted to skiespyphotos.com of that rime ice. Happens on foggy nights. That's a key distinction here. And, and it can be kind of windblown here on one side of an object and be a little bit more of that needle-like structure, whereas hoarfrost occurs on clearer and calmer nights. And we'll go over again those differences here over the next couple of minutes. But they're both caused when you have excess moisture in the lower levels of the atmosphere. It happens when you deposit the ice crystals on objects, usually smaller items that are freely exposed to the air, like a tree branch, plants, wires, power poles. They're both very visually similar here, so there's some very uh, subtle differences. Hoarfrost happens on clear and calm nights, so there's no fog present when you have that moisture near the ground. The air cools to the dew point, so it's kind of like how dew forms in the summertime in the liquid form. You can kind of envision it as like the frost point, so you have your temperature and your dew point. Once they meet, they can allow uh, some of that moisture to freeze into the hoarfrost, and it goes right from the gas state to the solid state. Deposition, we talked about that last week, water vapor straight to ice, and it can kind of have that feathered ice look when it's deposited on objects. Whereas with rime ice, we have super cooled water droplets that freeze onto a cold surface. Those super cooled water droplets are within fog. That's why we call it freezing fog. And that can be dense, creating for a lot of rime ice. And the rime ice can sometimes have this spiky appearance. But it's all because of the water to solid state here, whereas we go from uh, gas, water vapor, to solid state there. So some key differences there with the source of the moisture and the state of the water molecule before it freezes into the ice crystals. With hoarfrost, we go from the gas, the water vapor, through the process of deposition into the solid ice crystals, similar to dew formation. Whereas with rime ice, we have those liquid, very tiny, supercooled water droplets in fog that we can see, whereas water vapor, the gas, is invisible. So the liquid, supercooled droplets in freezing fog form that solid ice crystals. They freeze on contact with objects. And with the hoarfrost, it's clear nights and calm winds usually with the moisture sources coming from either a moist air mass moving into the region, snow on the ground, some of that can evaporate, make the atmosphere more moist, or an unfrozen body of water like a lake or river can add more moisture into the atmosphere near the surface. Whereas with rime ice, we have that dense fog and that translates to the frozen ice crystals on objects with rime ice. So focusing more on the rime ice, the super cooled water droplets freeze on contact with a cold sub-freezing surface. So these millions of water droplets and fog are so tiny that they can stay liquid well below the freezing point, all the way down to minus 40 degrees in some cases in that liquid form before they freeze. And the impact with a surface that's below freezing, that causes the droplet to turn into ice. Thicker than hoarfrost, rime ice is, is usually thicker than hoarfrost can be, depending on the length of the fog. And the formations develop on the wind-facing sides of objects, grows in the direction of the wind. So these are some extreme cases from New Hampshire, Mount Washington, and Mount Adams. But again, envision the wind blowing this direction and building the ice up from the sign backwards as more and more of those water droplets in the fog that's rolling through the area freeze on contact with the surface and then just get built up. And on the top of Mount Washington, those observers need to clear off that rime ice constantly. The hard rime ice, colder temperatures and stronger winds that, the, that can coat the uh, trees and objects solid in ice. And you can, this was a photo submitted to Sky Spy Photos of this tree just covered in all of that rime ice, very thick in nature, whereas soft rime, ice, you have winds that are light and it creates kind of this more needle-like structure that can be pretty picturesque as well. So kind of summing it all up here, hoarfrost versus rime ice. I think a lot of people confuse hoarfrost for rime ice or vice versa. Uh, rime ice might not be as well known, but a lot of times it's the rime ice that forms because we have the foggy nights, you have that freezing fog, and you get the ice crystals to form from the water droplets, whereas the hoarfrost, you need the cold and clear nights with the ice crystals forming just from the invisible water vapor gas around us. So interesting, subtle differences between the two, but they both create those beautiful scenes that can really <laughs> yeah. create for some photogenic scenes on a cold night around here.
It's been pretty cool. We've seen a lot of it this winter, right? Yeah, and it has been beautiful, and that yeah. I think is what keeps us going through some of those really cold yes. days. That's right? so true. At least it's pretty. And yep. being an aviation enthusiast, you know, one thing you don't want to have is rhyming. Rhyme build up That's on the, on the planes. Exactly, like it a causes a lot idea. of weight yeah. and not a good thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. great information, Jacob. As always, you're thank welcome. You, yeah, Jacob. Thank you.